everybody. Uh, I'm a little bit sick, so sorry if my I cough and hack and stuff. Um, I'm going to record two videos that I'm assuming you're starting at the place where we left off in class, which is where you have a ball that bounces off all four corners of the screen. And I'm going to show you how to get from there and end up with the classic arcade game, Pong. Before we jump into Pong, um, let's just make sure that you understand what we've got so far. Um, and even if you feel like you do understand it, there's kind of two key things that I want to make sure that you have foremost in your mind, because these are the programming skills that you're going to need to make sense of what's just about to come. So the first idea is thinking in terms of pseudocode. And if you remember what that means, like way back at the beginning, remember when we were doing Roomba programming? First, we made our plan, like how do we, like we want the Roomba to go forward and turn right, and then we translated that line by line into Java. So think about the individual lines of Java like building blocks, and think about what building blocks do we have so far. So like this is a single building block. I want to reverse my x direction. This one's a single building block. I want to reverse my y direction. This right here is sort of like a building block also. I'm asking, is the ball hitting the left-hand side of the screen? Here, if I said if x is greater than 600, that's the building block that's asking, is the ball hitting the right-hand side of the screen? So you can mix and match these elements. So right now I'm saying if it's hitting the left or if it's hitting the right, reverse its x speed. But of course I could say other things if I wanted to. I could say if it's hitting the left, then I want to do something totally different. Let's say when it hits the left side of the screen, I want it to uh, like move to a random position on the screen. Well, in that case, I wouldn't want to say x speed equals negative x speed. I want to keep the test that asks, is it hitting the left-hand side of the screen? But then I'd want to put in a different building block. So I'm thinking my building block is going to be, like, let's make a random number <coughs> and assign it to the x-coordinate. So now I've put them together in a way so that whenever it hits the left-hand side of the screen, it will regenerate at some random spot. Let's just see what that looks like. Oh, oops, sorry, I accidentally, I deleted the part that makes it bounce off the right-hand side of the screen. Okay, let's put that back. <coughs> um, okay, one more time. <coughs> Bam, there it is. So, that's the first point I'm trying to make, is, like, you want to be at a place where you can imagine what you want your game to do, and then write Java that does that. And so I think that the right thing to do is to, to keep the structure in your head, like what's the pseudocode, um, like English language, what are you testing for, what are you going to do if that's true, um, and then really think about the individual Java lines like building blocks that you're, you're building in different combinations to make it do different stuff. All right, point number two is understand the process that leads to the ball getting drawn. In previous years, if I had asked students to write this chunk of code, like when the ball hits the left-hand side of the screen, uh, reset it to somewhere else, a lot of people would have done this. They'd said, if the x-coordinate is less than zero, then what we'll do is we'll draw an ellipse at some other random location. Oh, abort. Nope. <clears throat> and then they would have filled this in with, with numbers. The reason that doesn't make any sense is because this ellipse command just draws an ellipse. But remember, in order for the ellipse to, to sort of last over time, you have to be drawing it every single frame, because this draw command is happening 30 times a second. So this, this line of code where we're drawing the ellipse, this is going to draw every single frame, and so that's what's going to produce the ball motion. Here, anything that's inside the if statement is only going to run in the moment that the x coordinate is less than zero. So that's like, you know, just a split second when we're hitting the right hand side of the screen. So if we just try and draw an ellipse at some new location, yeah, you'll see an ellipse somewhere else, but it'll only happen for just a second. So the point I'm trying to make here is separate the idea of when do you draw the ball from the idea of when do you move the ball. The movement happens in a completely separate line. So for example, here I'm moving the ball because I'm changing the number inside here. But the moment the number changes inside here, you don't see that change on the screen. You've got to wait a split second until the code goes all the way to the bottom of draw, all the way back to the top, and all the way back to the ellipse command again. 
So that's kind of weird to think about the first time you encounter it. Um, but remember the process that the computer is using. Changing the numbers happens at a different moment in time than when you see the result of those changes. All right, enough preamble. Let's do Pong. For those of you who don't know this game, um, there is a paddle, which you could control either with your mouse or with the keyboard, and the ball bounces off of these three walls, but and, and also bounces off your paddle, but if you happen to miss the ball, um, it will go off the bottom of the screen, and then you'll lose a life, and maybe the ball will reset. So whenever you're planning a game that you want, it pays to sort of list in normal English, like what are the features that you want it to have, like what are the things that you need to add in Java. So let's start there. I'm just going to notate them as like a comment at the top here. Um, and you don't have to write this down, but this is just how I'm going to keep track of what we want to do. So I want to uh, draw a rectangle for the paddle. Um, we need to be able to move the paddle using, well, maybe we'll use the keyboard. Um, and I can show you how to use the mouse afterwards if you want. Um, what else needs to change? Well, right now the ball bounces off the bottom of the screen, so I want to um, remove code that bounces ball off bottom of screen. But then I guess I want to add code so that if ball is off bottom of screen, then I want to subtract the life and reset ball position. Okay, so I guess if I'm subtracting a life, that means I need to add a lives variable. And if there are lives, the player probably wants to know how many of those they have. So let's add text that displays how many lives. Uh, what else do we need? So I've got a paddle. I can move it around. The ball is bouncing. Uh, oh, the key thing. Um, make sure ball can bounce off of paddle. Okay, so I did that rather quickly. Um, I think that if I'd asked you to come up with a feature list, you'd, you probably wouldn't have come up with all of those things because you're not used to this way of thinking yet. But if you're going to want to make your own games later, this is a good skill to practice. Sit down and watch somebody else's game and think in specific detail. What, what specific things need to happen in this game? Like if there's gravity, um, you know, how do you ensure that the player doesn't fall through the ground? When you hit the space bar and they jump, what, you know, what's that really doing? So have a feature list. All right, so for the moment, let's, let's do all the paddle stuff in video two. Well, let's draw the paddle now. We'll do all the paddle movement in video two, but we'll do everything else right now. So I'd say the easiest thing to do is let's do sort of the lives variable and the text display. If you don't know how to display text, um, the packet that I gave you guys, the last page of it shows code for how you do text. Um, so, but you can just follow along with this video if you want. So let's make a, li oh, I already have a lives variable. Okay, you probably don't, but here I've made lives and I've initialized it to three. The way you do text, um, inside setup, we're going to set the text size, and the command for that is text size. And I'm gonna make a text size of 32. And then down inside draw, I want to display the text. I got to do it after background because background wipes the entire screen. So if I did it before background, I wouldn't see it because it would paint over top. The text command is what displays text. And I'm going to say lives and then display my lives variable. And then the next two inputs are the X and Y coordinates for where I want that to display. So I want it to display kind of in the upper right hand side of my screen. So I'm just estimating in my head here. If the width of the screen is 600, I'm thinking maybe x coordinate of 450, y coordinate of 80, seems possible. And I want to fill my paint color with a black paint before I t uh, before I draw the text. Okay, so this loads the black paint color. This draws the text. Let's take a look. Cool. That looks great. All right. So now I want to. I guess I'll check these off as I'm doing them. So I've done this and I've done this. Now I want to do this. I want to remove the code that bounces the ball off the bottom of the screen. So I'm thinking, all right, where do I do that? Where do I test to see is the ball hitting the bottom of the screen? Um, it looks like it's here. This is actually doing two things. So I'm just going to delete this part of it. If Y is greater than 600, that's the bottom. So now if I run it, it should bounce off the other walls, but not the bottom. Great, it just falls off the bottom. 
All right, so now I want to add code so that if the ball hits the bottom, I subtract a life and reset the ball. Okay, so I'm gonna make a separate if statement for that. So if y is greater than 600, I know if it's off the bottom of the screen. So what do, what do I wanna do? Uh, I wanna subtract a life. So I'll subtract one from my lives variable. And then I wanna reset the ball position. So think, if you're not sure how to do something, it'll usually be that you wanna change a variable. So I'm thinking if I wanna reset where the ball is, what variable do I need to change? Uh, I'm thinking probably the variables that store its position. So I'll go ahead and reset X to be maybe the middle of the screen and I'll reset Y to be close to the top of the screen to give the player enough time to sort of manage everything. I guess I could also reset the X and Y speed if I wanted to. So we could reset the Y speed to five and reset the X speed to something random between four and what? Let's see. So like between uh, negative four and positive four, something like this. Okay, so let's see if that's gonna work. Great, so now it's subtracting lives and it's going off the bottom of the screen. Aha, well, notice that we didn't actually tell it to do anything if lives hit zero, so actually we're just losing lives forever now. We can deal with that in a minute. Uh, let's do the last step, which is drawing the paddle. So if I want to draw the paddle, you got to remember the command to do that. It is the rect command. And you can check this on the first page of your packet handout, but remember there's four inputs. The first pair of inputs is the XY coordinates of the upper left hand corner of your paddle. And then this is the width and this is the height. So let's kind of plan this out a little bit. I'm thinking my width, I want to be about 100 pixels, and the height I want to be very, very skinny, so I'm going to make it maybe 10 pixels tall, so I know this is going to be 100, this is going to be 10. My x, y coordinates, I want those to change. Well, I probably don't want my y coordinate to change, I just want my x coordinate to change. Um, so if you want something to change, you got to make it a variable. I can't call it x because x is already the coordinate I'm using for my ball, so I could call it like paddle x to indicate that it is the paddles x coordinate um, and I might as well make this a variable also it's just I you know just because it's a variable doesn't mean I actually have to change that number but I think this is nice because then if I look at the command I can tell what these numbers mean instead of it just saying like 10 10 like what does that mean I have to remember but if I call it by a sensible name then I know what it is because I can just read it Here's something that I like to do. Um, so I'm gonna fill with black again, and then I'm gonna draw a rectangle. What, I'm, what I like to do is I like to use my variables here and then create them. So I know that I want this X coordinate to be a variable, so I'll just pretend I have paddle X already. I'll pretend I have paddle Y already. And then this is 100 by 10. And if you think that you want the width of your paddle to change ever, like maybe as the game goes on it gets, uh, it gets narrower, which makes, makes the game harder, then you could make this a variable also. Okay, so it's complaining because I don't have these variables, so let's go up to the very top and create them. I'll make a float called paddle x that I'll set at 300. I'll make a float called paddle y. I want that to be close to the bottom of the screen. See, the bottom of the screen is 600, so if I subtract Let's subtract 15 from that, so that'll be, uh, what, 585? <clears throat> Alright, let's run it and see what it looks like. Cool, so there's my paddle, and it's not moving yet, so that'll be next video.